Well, good morning and welcome to your Sunday Gardener. I'm John Collins along with Carrie Angle from Valley View Farms. You know, the other day we, we've got a bird feeder. It's got a red on it. Uh huh. And there was a hummingbird around it. Oh, lovely. Now, the hummingbird wasn't going after the seeds, it was looking for <laughs> nectar, which that feeder didn't have. But we want to talk about hummingbirds today and plants that attract them. Hummingbird gardens are really cool. They really are cool. And hummingbirds are pollinators, so along with bees and butterflies, they really help out our plant life and really keep our fruit process going, keeps the food chain going. So these are plants, and what we're talking about here is perennials, which are great because they get a good, strong start every spring that way, that are, are flowers built for hummingbirds. <laughs> they are built right. for hummingbirds. Let's just get tall guy back That's here. It doesn't flower yet. But... Nope, and he's going to get a lot bigger. I have yeah. some of those that are about four feet. They oh, get really? indigo, oh. blue, indigo blue flowers, um, mm. used for dyes, in fact, really? but really a cool plant, um, and hummingbirds and butterflies love it. Um, feel the, st the stem on that. That's a square stem. So oh, really? Yeah. yeah okay. That's indicative that's of cool. a mint family plant. That's Monarda or bee balm. So, again, great for pollinators, including bees, butterflies, hummingbirds. Comes every, are these like shade loving or sun loving? Uh, the first two so far are, shade, are sun loving, excuse me. Okay. But now we have a shade lover, at right. least partial shade. This is hookah or coral bells. And for years we've talked about hookah and the beautiful colors that the leaves come in, but they're going back and breeding some for the flowers. So, again, these pollinators absolutely love this plant. And these kind of spread, at least I've got a bunch of hookah that just kind of self, these things throw seed heads and, and you get a lot more. Yeah, they're the beautiful. Let me get this out of the way because we've got some plants buried here. These, this is? That's Cardinal Climber Lobelia, and that's going to get about three feet tall, and that's one of those plants that will do well in shade. It gets a scarlet red flower. It's also available in a blue uh, that's very pretty, and again, the hummingbirds love it. Behind it? Uh, cat mint. Um, that can really spread out in your garden, so give it some room to grow. There are some, I'm trying to think of the name, it's like a junior cat mint that doesn't mm -hmm. quite get, it, get as large. And then the red, the reddish I've got foliage. This coming up, I put a few in as a perennial, and they're uh, very tough. They are very tough. And Gara is great because the flowers themselves look a little bit like butterflies, so it mm -hmm. really adds to that look and gives great texture. Great plant to use in container gardening with some of your annuals too. Okay, but in the ground, and, and again, we're all perennials, and they like sun. This guy. That's hot lip salvia and the hot, hot lip lips. sage. Hot as, lips. You gotta love the uh, hot lips. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. um, we're showing our age here, John. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but anyway, this is a great plant. The it's salvias cute. in general are wonderful pollinator plants. A lot a lot of them are natives, um, mm -hmm. so they really do well in our area. And then this purple guy over here. Purple guy, that's that's the real geranium, the perennial geranium, and the geraniums can do well in part sun, part shade mm -hmm. um, out in the garden. They do beautifully. And then the one thing you have to have to have monarch butterflies is Asclepius or butterfly weed. Butterfly weed, I kind of okay. And, 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 and hummingbirds it, like it too. Hummingbirds like it too. Um, and uh, anything in the milkweed family is is very attractive to butterflies here, and hummingbirds. Kind of see what so. the flower is supposed to look like. All right. And don't worry about the term weed. Don't worry about term weed. That means okay. the plant's going to grow like nobody's business. Like wildfire, so to speak. <laughs> then, of course, to help along, a feeder. That's right. And hummingbird feeders, there's so many neat ones out there now. Mm -hmm. There's some really cool things that, that I know we have. Um, and you can make up your own hummingbird mix, or you can buy the mix already. But do make sure you're keeping it clean, keeping it safe for the hummingbirds. Because that, that sucrose in the water will go into mold pretty That's quickly, right. especially on warm summer days. So changing it over every week or every three days in really hot days is... You've got to it's do it. ideal, and, yeah. and you're, you'll be rewarded with beautiful hummingbirds. Hummingbirds, they're cool to watch, and the flowers are pretty too. <laughs> Carrie, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank Next you. Sunday, we'll be back with more about your garden on Sunday Gardener. We'll see you then. If you have a garden question, send it to Sunday Gardener, WBAL TV, 3800 Hooper Avenue, Baltimore, 21111.